Hey everybody, welcome to the Muddy Reviews. Today we're reviewing the Ferro Concepts Wingman V2 radio pouch. So this here is uh, one side of the Ferro Concepts Wingman V2. The other side is actually inside this plate carrier that's off camera. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. But I wanted to just kind of give you an idea of the construction of the pouch. And then we'll show you the pouch actually mounted and kind of what it looks like and what my setup is. So this is, as I said, the Wingman. And it is made of uh, four inch elastic. They say milspick elastic, so it holds its retention. It, it does. It's good shit, but I don't know if I just think it's funny when people say milspick, milspick. Anyway, uh, they do make repros of these guys. So a quick way to tell a real one from a fake one is this tag right here. It says Ferro Concepts Wingman V2. It's this nice OD green tag. Very similar, common Ferro Concepts tags. So body of the pouch is this elastic. You've got this nice uh, woven jacquard webbing. And it runs from here all the way around to here. You've got these two little eyelet holes that are sewn in. And that's for this shot cord we'll talk about in a second. I do like the fact that they went with this uh, woven Murdoch uh, webbing instead of uh, solution dyed. Nothing wrong with solution dyed. I just think the Murdoch webbing just looks a lot nicer. You've got printed multicam loop. And then you've got hook back here. The hook goes about an inch longer than the loop. This gives you better purchase when you have it actually on your plate carrier. Nice box stitch both sides. Tensions are good on the back, so that's really nice. You're not going to have any issues with your stitch. It's getting kind of loose and starting to come undone. A nice bar tacks here and here, here and here. So overall, very nicely constructed. Very happy uh, with what I've got here. Does come with two lengths of, I believe this is one eighth inch shot cord. Could be wrong on the exact sizing. I always confuse that because I am a smooth brain. I'll have the actual sizing if I can find it. In the description below but it gives you these so you can add extra retention at the top and it also comes with two sns precision pull tabs which are very nice quick side note if you saw my replica dope pouch review i did mention that the fake sns pull tabs on there were very bendy and rubbery and i i said i thought the sns pull tabs were very hard plastic rigid i was mistaken because it's been a long time since i've had them in my hands these are real ones, and they are bendy as well. Not as bendy, but they are bendy as well. Just wanted to point that out. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So, I've got a couple common radios here. I've got a TRI-152, and I've got a Baofeng UV-5R. Uh, these are two fairly common radios you will see with uh, Airsoft Milsim guys and uh, kid enthusiasts. The 152 is a little less common than the UV-5R, but you do see them. I do not have a 148, unfortunately, but I have another radio, a third option that's inside the plate carrier, and I'll show you that in a second. So the UV-5R has Great Plains Creations armor on it. You'll see a little card pop up, and that will have a link to the video on that if you are curious, because it is an awesome product as well. And with the armor, it fits very well and very snug. You will have a little bit of space at the bottom. It will not go all the way down to the bottom of the webbing. I don't think that's an issue. Could be a snag issue, possibly. If you really felt it was, you could pitch it off and tape it with some 90 mile an hour tape, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. I don't feel you will need the shock cord to be put in here because that guy's not coming out of there at all. But if you are a Balfang user, a UV5R runner, uh, the wing man will do you right. All right. The TRI 152. Bear with me. Uh, this can be a little hard to get, kind of get this guy in here at first because you got to really stretch this guy out because she's tight. <sighs> she's still new. There we go. This guy in here, pretty good. Fits really well. Now, I will say this. So with the TRI, you got a lot of radio coming out the top. You might want to consider putting uh, the shot cord on to give you a little more retention at top. Not 100% necessary. Same old shake test. It shifted a little bit, as you can see, maybe about a quarter, half an inch, but I don't think it's going to come flying out of there if you're crawling and running, but you might want to consider the shock cord to come over top because it is a whole lot of extra radio difference between the bottom and the top, but it does come all the way down to the bottom and fills in this webbing, which is nice. 152 fits well, which I would expect nothing less because it's kind of designed for these real size radios because this is made for uh, real dudes doing real shit, uh, not for uh, BB nerds like me doing nothing. Now, 
let's talk about this actually on the carrier. So what we have here, we have a, a Ferro Concepts FC PC V5, and I have this mounted on the left side of the carrier because I shoot my rifle on the right side. I'm going to twist the camera so you can see the carrier. And uh, we're gonna look at it. So the radio is right here. It's behind the cummerbund. That is one of the advantages of running a system like this is it gets stuff off the face of the cummerbund and it kind of gets it behind it. So one of the things I personally like about running the radio like this is it is not actually a piece of the cummerbund like a pouch coming off the cummerbund where it makes like a cummerbund lump, but it is separate from the cummerbund, which you're about to see. So as you can see here, uh, this is the radio pouch, the wingman, right here. And it kind of like is an extension of the plate bag. Extension of the plate bag. Hmm. And uh, it basically just kind of makes the plate and the radio just kind of one thing. And it doesn't really get intrusive. Please ignore the chihuahua. I, I don't really notice it as much. I have noticed when I'm running a 6094, when it has the internal cover bun, I, radio pouch, I like it. I think it works great, but it can feel a little awkward with that cummerbund lump. This doesn't feel that way to me. I, I don't know if it's still all in my head, but it just doesn't feel that way to me. Now, I will say it is a little weird. It seems a little awkward at first glance with this mag pouch here. It looks like it would get in the way of the radio, especially when you have it down at this angle. We're gonna rotate you back down. When you have it down at this angle, kind of looking down at it, it almost looks like this mag pouch kind of uh, includes the radio, gets in the way. It doesn't really, it, it's off, especially once it starts kind of rolling and twisting on the body, it doesn't get in the way. What you are gonna run into though, is the fact that if you're running this radio pouch, you cannot access the face of your radio easily. You're gonna to have to remove the radio from the pouch to access it. So if I need to program anything on this radio in here, I'm gonna to have to yank it out of there, change frequencies, change whatever, and then put it back. That will be a pain in the ass. So if you find yourself at a Milsim event where you know for a fact you access your radio a lot and you're changing frequencies a lot, this may not be the option for you. You may not like it because you're gonna to have to yank it out of there. You may want a radio pouch that actually sits on the face of your cummerbund and tips out so you can do your thing and then comes back up and secures. Keep that in mind. Different strokes for different folks. I will not be doing that. I'm going to be able to just set a couple frequencies, a channel A, channel B kind of shit, and call it good. Worst, worst case, if I absolutely need to change it, I will just yank the radio out, change it, and put it back. It's no skin off my ass. But other guys, they are fucking wizards and they're going to be doing like hand jamming magic and all that shit that's not my scene i like it i really do enjoy um, how it feels how it rides comparatively i like the fact that it does free up a little more space on my cummerbund and kind of gets some more stuff off the face of the cummerbund and just i don't know just keeps this from being so bulky might move this might not i gotta play with it now a little bit but overall uh it does change the dynamic of my setup a little bit, and I do like that. Definitely a nice product. Faro did a great job of taking something that was already out there and making it just a little bit better. It is not a revolutionary design by any means. They didn't like create something fresh and innovating. Cry Precision already had something kind of similar with the JPC radio wings. Those were made of like a stretch tweave material. I think Pharaoh's usage of elastic here instead of the stretch tweeve is actually superior and better. That's just my opinion, but I do believe that. I think this is a much better design personally. So good job, Pharaoh. Way to go. These are going to be util utilizable, util util yeah. utilizable for multiple plate carriers out there. You could use these on a JPC. You could use these on a 694. Any plate carrier that has the same basic setup as this where it's hook, loop, boom. As long as it's got loop face and hook can interface to it, you can use 
one of these guys here. So don't think you have to have a Pharaoh to utilize these guys here because you don't. And that's something I think Pharaoh also did a wonderful job on is they're made accessories that can be utilized on multiple different carriers. You don't have to be just by Pharaoh to use Pharaoh stuff. I hope you got something out of this video, guys. I hope you got something out of this review. I hope I didn't ramble on too long. I was just trying to make my points as succinctly as possible. Thank you so much for watching. As always, get out there, LARP hard, be a bunch of nerds. This is a fun hobby, and I think more people would enjoy it if they just gave it a shot. If you like this content, you might enjoy it enough to subscribe. If you do, you'll see a little helmet head over there in the right-hand corner. Please give it a push. In the left top, there's going to be a video that YouTube is going to say you might like. It's probably the most recent video. In the right-hand top, there's going to be a video that I think would be interesting to you because it's going to be relating to Pharaoh Concepts. That's all I got, guys. LARP hard, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.